Hi guys, it's Mark from Christ Centered Fitness. Uh, today I want to talk to you guys a little bit about uh, some of the thoughts that go on in our minds and specifically um, where they might come from. So first I want to talk about uh, in the Bible, uh, you're probably familiar with the verse. If you've ever been to a wedding, it says love is patient, love is kind, right? It's from, it's from Corinthians and Paul's letter to the Corinthians, and he says, love is patient, love is kind. He gives some descriptors as to what love is like. If you ever want a litmus test for how you're doing in your marriage, by the way, just replace the word love with your name, right? Mark is patient. Mark is kind. Mark keeps no record of wrongs. You know, you see these things and you think, oh man, <laughs> I'm falling short in this area. And it just gives you some some uh, pointers on where you can where you can focus your attention so you're in line with how you're supposed to love your spouse. In any case, one of the things it says in that Corinthians verse is that love keeps no record of wrongs. And in Corinthians, sorry, I lied. In Colossians, it says that that our that our charges against us were nailed to the cross. With Jesus, in other words, that that those were taken off us. In other words, we are no longer, you know, that love, that God's love, true love, keeps no record of wrongs, and that our wrongs were nailed to the cross with Jesus. In other words, the things levied against us that we might levy against us, that He might levy against us, have been forgiven, right? So you would think, okay, well, that's super, right? But in the book of Revelation, what it says is that Satan actually has another name given to him. There's a number of descriptors they use for him. And in Revelation, they actually call him the accuser. And when you think about that, and you think about the kind of thoughts that go in your head on a regular basis, they're actually not in line with being, you know, things in the past being nailed to the cross, right? So, for example, in, in your fitness pursuits, you might hear things like, yeah, you failed at this before, right? Someone might say it to you, it might be in your mind, but if you, you, you're playing that over, you can't do this. You can't make that stick. You're too fat. You're going to go to the gym. People can see you're fat. They're going to look at you. People are going to judge you, right? People, you know, you are not good enough. You're not pretty enough. Your husband is looking at other people. Your wife is looking at other people because you are not good looking enough because you are not fit enough. And you're never going to get to where you want to be. And these accusations are designed to steal, kill, and destroy. Because that's what it says Satan is, comes to do. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy your life. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy your marriage. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy your joy, your relationships with your children, and your physical health. He comes to tear down and destroy those things so he can destroy whatever purpose it is God might have in your life to affect other people. So what do we do with those thoughts, right? Because this fitness battle, we think of it as a fitness battle, but the, but the Bible says that the battles we fight are not flesh and bone, they're, that, that they're fought in the spirit. And when you start thinking about, whoa, like these things that are coming into my head are, are, are spirit, could be spiritual attacks, things that are trying to steal and kill and destroy my life. And you can fight back at those things by reading the word and knowing what our weapons are and that we can pray and battle back against these things. But the Bible also says, again, to take captive all the thoughts in our mind that, that are not obedient to Christ's word, to what the Bible says about us, and, and to submit them to Christ. In other words, these thoughts that you hear come in, you can't just like put, let it come in, let it come in, let it come in and acknowledge it, acknowledge it, acknowledge it. Yeah, at first you have to just first acknowledge it, but in the end, you have to capture that thought and be like, no, you are not true. This is not the truth. And I submit you to, to what, what Christ has said about me and you are gone, right? And you have to banish those thoughts because the enemy, the accuser, he who would tear you down and destroy your life wants to ruin your life. He wants to ruin your marriage. He wants to ruin your relationships. And he wants to destroy your physical health, right? And the best way to battle back, yes, you can eat well. Yes, you can exercise. But the reason why I talk about 
Christ-centered fitness, why Christ is at the center is because I believe that the battles are largely spiritual and that the physical change is a manifestation of what happens in the spiritual realm. Now, some of y'all might be tuning in and you're not really familiar with this thought process. Maybe I'm coming across as a little crazy, but listen to me when I tell you, I have seen this manifested in my own life and in other people's lives. And when you overcome things in the spiritual, they begin to manifest positively in the physical. So that's just kind of what I want you to start thinking about, start processing your thoughts. Your thoughts are just not transient things that flow through your mind. Your thoughts come out of your mouth in the words you say, and they also translate into what you do. So you need to capture the thoughts of the accuser and make them submit to Christ and what he has said about you because our transgressions, our negative doings have been nailed to the cross and we are made whole in Christ. So that is my encouragement to you for today. Get out there, defeat those thoughts and start living yourselves a more positive and full and abundant life.